Hi, Rich. Hi, Adam. My name is Elizabeth, and I am in Nanaimo, British Columbia. Firstly, I want to say how much I enjoy your roll-on conversations. Rich, I also want to thank you for providing a platform to educate and challenge listeners to expand their perspectives and their awareness. I credit you with encouraging me to consider a plant-based lifestyle for myself, and also through your guests and your own perspective, I've made that change in my own life to great benefits. I'm really interested in getting your perspectives on leadership. Something I value and treasure about your podcast and perspective is your self-awareness and your willingness to examine yourself in your life. I'm curious what your perspective is on leadership. How do you show up to lead your team? Do you have any advice for spiritual, self-aware individuals that value doing the work on themselves on how to show up in a professional setting and or perhaps ideas on how to blend self-awareness and personal growth with leadership and encourage your team to do the same? What a cool question, Elizabeth. Um, Thank you for that. I don't know if anybody's ever really asked me about leadership before. It, it is, it's fascinating. I will admit that uh, I haven't spent a lot of time pondering leadership and and probably less time studying it over the years. Um, but I have started thinking about it a little bit more and shouldering this mantle more recently because I now employ people, which is something I never thought would happen. So mm. I guess I would, I would launch into this response by saying, I'm a reluctant leader. I don't consider myself a thought leader or a leader of teams. I think of myself as a solopreneur, somebody who relishes quiet alone time. I'm fundamentally a writer in disposition and always kind of consider myself suited to doing my own thing and wanting to be left alone. I mean, that's still my greatest desire is just to be left alone, <laughs> right? Yes. But I recognize that <laughs> I've created this situation <laughs> <laughs> that places me now in the context of having to lead much more than I would have ever wanted or realized. And with the growth of the podcast, like I said, I have people that I employ now, I am a boss. I'm a subcontractor, you don't employ me. <laughs> you are, you're not, yes, you don't report to me. <laughs> I'll W9 you. Um, I am a boss though, which is weird. And I admit it's a little bit uncomfortable for me, but it's forced me to kind of wrestle with some growth stuff uh, because what I say, how I say it, and, and, and more importantly, like what I do, how I comport myself, how I handle myself matters to other people in my immediate orbit. And so I have started kind of thinking about these issues. Um, in a more meaningful way recently. Um, I won't say that I have any kind of specific philosophy of leadership, but I do have a few touchstones and, and many of those I have to say, I credit um, to my business partner, Greg Anzalone. Like I've learned so much from this guy. I just think he's an exemplary human being and leader. Greg mm-hmm. is the CEO of Sideshow, Sideshow Collectibles. Um, that's really, you know, what he, like he's my business partner, but really his business is Sideshow, which makes limited edition collectible figures from pop culture, like all the Star Wars stuff and Marvel stuff, like these limited runs of like beautiful, um, you know, the the Baby Yoda is mm-hmm. their product, stuff mm-hmm. like that. And um, Greg is somebody I've come to to really deeply admire and, and respect as, as one of the most effective and compassionate leaders that I've ever met mm. uh, and somebody who in so many ways mimics the findings and the research of, of Adam Grant, mm-hmm. who's the guy in the podcast this week, a guy who studied leadership deeply for, for many, many years. And, and so some of those touchstones are, and this is coming from Greg, it's about the people, not the product, that the employees come before the widget right? Like the organization is, is set up not to make widgets, but to empower people's lives with meaning and purpose. Um, I've learned that uh, it's wise to approach every situation with a giving mindset. It's not about what you uh, can get out of a situation, but how you can better support the people beneath you. Um, I've learned that it's about action and behavior. What you say is important, but that must be aligned with your actions, which obviously speak louder than words. And if your actions are misaligned with your words, then you faltered. So I think that's been super helpful to me. 
Um, I'm a perfectionist, so learning that progress is better than perfection is a, a lesson hard wrought for myself, mm. something that I'm getting used to because your perfectionism might help you create something that will get you to a certain level, but if you wanna create largesse in a sustainable way, you have to empower the people around you. And those people are, have their own ways of doing things and, and that's not always gonna meet up with how you would do things. So holding on too tightly to your ideas, I think becomes an inhibitor to growth. So learning how to let go and empower other people. I think is super important. I think anticipating the needs of the people that you work with is really powerful, like creating solutions to problems before they arise, because you can see where things are, are headed before they even get there. Um, one of the things I've seen Greg do is just surprise and delight the people that work underneath him and alongside him by showing up in ways that others in a position of leadership don't because they're thinking about themselves. Mm. And Greg's always thinking about other people and he'll just show up and do the thing that nobody would have ever expected. Mm. And sometimes they're big gestures and sometimes they're little gestures, but they're always very meaningful. Like Greg will, will um, you know, find housing for an employee or do something that like a CEO or a person in a position of leadership just wouldn't, you know, you wouldn't think that they would be thinking about the people who work beneath them in such a meaningful way. Yeah. And that's been, you know, really kind of amazing to see him do that time and time again and has impacted me. Um, I think in terms of leadership, thinking about how to play the long game is super important. Um, not over indexing for short-term profitability or productivity, but rather thinking broadly about creating and establishing sustainable systems that allow people to flourish and do their best work, not in a highly pressurized environment, but giving them a little bit of bandwidth um, so that they can um, feel secure in their expression, I think is huge. Um, Adam has this great quote, Adam Grant, which is the most meaningful way to succeed is to help others succeed. Mm -hmm. And it seems simple, but I think it's powerful to not perceive the world as some kind of zero sum equation, but to look at things from a broader, more spiritual perspective that the universe is infinitely abundant. So with that, give freely of yourself and service to others. And not only does that come back in your direction tenfold, it engenders amazing trust and loyalty in the people that that you work with. See, we're back to the Taoist philosophy. I mean, that's really the whole like the middle way is the Taoist philosophy is um, if 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 the few have much and the many have little, that's totally completely anti the way the like the the the, the nature of the Tao. Mm. And the idea is to. Uh, is to have everyone share in the abundance. And so like the fact that, that you're citing that as a driving philosophy for your business bodes well for your business. If countries worked out that way, like you know, in Scandinavia, countries who have a expanded social safety net and are able to, um, you know, yes, the taxes might be higher to have healthcare and public education at a high level and X, Y, and Z. But if you actually look at everyone's bank account, everyone has more money, mm. the rich and the lower mm -hmm. lower working class and the middle class, there is no mm -hmm. lower class. And so if you look at it that way, everyone does better when there's enough for everyone. Mm. And, and the way we have it in our mind is, well, if I have to pay this, it's less for me, you know, that person should get, should get more themselves, you know? Right. But that's just not how it works. You know, if everyone did better, everyone would do better. It's very simple, but unfortunately, you know, we do have a leadership vacuum. I, I love this question because we have a leadership vacuum in this world right now. There's not a lot of effective leaders yeah. you can point to that are getting the job done on a on a global or national level. There's a few that we we sometimes identify, but it's hard. And I think the great leadership, everything's like the best leaders, it's all happening local in people's homes and people's businesses. Yeah. And and uh and I think Greg's amazing. It's, it's been so cool to meet him and learn from him. So well said. Yeah, hundred percent. And just and and having a moral compass yeah. and having your actions aligned with that perspective, right? Like, isn't that what leadership is? It's not it's not just you know, bending to whatever is in your self-interest in the moment, which seems to be the hallmark of current times, That's but right. rather, you know, uh, heeding a greater call and being willing to sacri sacrifice yourself first 
in the interest of that. Yeah. And I think when you demonstrate that as a leader, um, that's very powerful for the people that are following you. Agreed. Well said. 